Well, this is the Hoops Guru. We're back at it again. We're still in the Atlantic Division, and now we're talking New York Knicks, baby. Let's go. You know, this team last year struggled real hard, didn't make the playoffs again, and they were near the bottom in every major statistical category that matters as far as when you're trying to have a winning season. They were 24th in the league in field goal percentage, 27th in sco uh, points scored, and 20th in three-point shooting. So they need help all across the board. And unfortunately, I don't think they addressed those major needs uh, in areas in free agency. They did pick up Derrick Rose, which I'm very excited about. I love Derrick Rose. He's trying real hard, and he's playing for money. Hey, there's no there's no bigger motivation than when a guy's playing for a contract, especially when that salary cap's going up, 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 up. So there's opportunity to really cash in. You know, I know guys are looking at Mike Connolly and guys of that nature, and you're going to see guys really focused trying to get a – prove that they're worth an extension to get the big paydays that are coming up in the next season. With that being the case, I think Derrick Rose is a, a great gamble for the Knicks. It's a one-year contract, and if this guy can show 80, 90 percent of his former self, the garden is going to be rocking. Not saying that they're going to make any noise in the postseason, but during the regular season, that garden is, supposed to, is going to be rocking. And when the garden's rocking, the NBA is just a funner place. It just is. So they have the point guard they need, a point guard they probably had, haven't had excitement since the Rod Strickland days, let's say, in the Garden. So that's great. Um, they added Noah, which I really like a lot. Uh, Noah, formerly from the Chicago Bulls, coming over with Derrick Rose as well. So they got they still have that Tibbs sense of defensive urgency in their blood, which is very well going to be needed. I think Noah's going to be the anchor of this defense to keep Carmelo Anthony engaged, communicate with Porzingis, and really get those guys to buckle down on the defensive side. So during that they can be in games and that Carmelo Anthony and Derrick Rose can close them out if it's close in the fourth quarter. That's all you're really asking. Um, there is also, when I'm looking at this team, I wish they would have did better in the shooting guard signing. Courtney Lee is serviceable, a good player, but he's a journeyman. He's about, I believe he's 30 years old now, and I don't know how much he actually moves the needle to make this a better team. It's not like he's a Bradley Beal or a Clay Thompson or one of these guys that you know is is on the cusp of being an all-star or on the outside looking in or is going to light up the, the the scoreboard, excuse me. So in that regard, he's, he's solid. He's very rock solid, and he's not a negative. But I don't know if he's a plus. But from what their roster was, I guess the Knicks can't complain. So that's a good piece to have as well. And then also we have my, my man, Christoph Porzingis. Um, had a very good year. I believe he was second in the rookie of the year, Chase. Um, a lot of people had question marks on draft day, but they, he made them swallow all those questions in pride because he balled out. And he actually looked like he bulked up a little bit over the summer. And so far in the preseason, his jumper's looking pretty wet, very consistent. So I'm excited to see what Kristoff is going to do this year for the Knicks. Uh, hopefully he'll be more involved in the, in the offense. We'll see him raining threes from outside in that triangle offense that they're running, which I hope they don't run a lot of. Because, excuse me, Coach Hornacek did say that he wants this team to be more running in transition, looking for early offense. And I think that's the best way to run. I just don't want the ball to stick in Carmelo's hands, him pounding the ball for 15, 20 seconds, uh, and everybody is standing around watching. I think that ball needs to move around and have defenses working because there's more than one scoring option now than Melo. We don't need him being a black hole. We need more of Olympic Carmelo where he does a little bit of everything, hits the boards. You know, he does score, but he's also – not just the scoring option, but he is one of them. I think that's what's going to help the Knicks be successful um, in this next campaign coming up. Um, the biggest question, though, outside the starting five, their bench. That's going to be a very uh, – that's going to be the make or break for this team, to tell the truth. I, there are – some parts of the bench I like, and there's some part of the bench I can't stand at all. But, you know, Phil Jackson was kind of limited with not having a draft pick and salary cap restraint. So I think he did the best he can do with what he had. Uh, 
Lance Thomas, very good. Should be the first guy off the bench or spell if anybody's ever out. He's shown some consistency and growth in his career, and I think he's going to be a good part of this rotation. Uh, Brandon Jennings was an awesome, awesome pick for the Knicks. Great insurance policy for Derrick Rose. I actually think there's situations where you could play him and Rose together, slide Rose off the ball, let him play a little shooting guard if they want to go small. They can do a lot of different things with uh, Brandon Jennings. And he can be a scoring spark plug, too. I believe he has a 50-point game under his belt in his career. So we definitely know this is the type of guy that can light it up if he's focused on scoring, which I hope they advise him to do so with this bench because there's not a lot of scoring on this bench, to tell the truth. Um the Knicks have Ron Baker out of Wichita State, and I like this kid a lot. I uh, thought he should have been in the NBA a while ago, but I guess he played his four years. It seemed like he played five. But uh, Ron Baker can ball, man. I just hope, you know, we have him in the organization that he has some confidence. He, he's a hustle guy. He doesn't have to just sit in the corner, shoot threes. He's very active and uh, just a heady basketball player. He, I don't think he, there's any drawbacks with him at all and I think that he can play a part of this rotation and I'd be more keen on him coming off the bench uh contributing than someone like a Sasha Vujicic. I Sasha just doesn't move the needle from for me. Uh prone to make more mistakes than I like for somebody of his veteran career status. I don't he is not a great prolific scorer or anything of that nature and he still makes too many mistakes for me so for someone who's been around the league and has championship hardware. Uh, I guess he's solid, though, but how many rosters and other teams in the NBA would want Sasha on their particular team? I, don't, I think Phil Jackson likes him out of familiarity, and that's about it. So, you know, outside of that, and then we have Kyle O'Quinn. I mean, he's decent. He's serviceable. But... That, that that's just Kyle Quinn being the primary backup or the the person in play if someone like Noah gets hurt playing major minutes is not a sign of a team that's going to make the playoffs or make any noise in the current NBA. It's just not. And unfortunately, Kyle's probably going to be one of the primary people off the bench because the young Euros haven't really established their shit, themselves yet or have gotten acclimated to the NBA game. So in that regard, I think you will see a lot of Kyle Quinn, and I don't know how positive that's going to be as far as the Knicks' success is concerned. Um, so when we're talking, also, will Derrick Rose and Carmelo lead? It's important that they lead these, this young group of guys this year. People are looking for the Knicks to make the turn. So we want to see how consistent they play connected on defense. Will they work the offense thoroughly and give up good shots for great shots? Will Carmelo just – or he will he revert to just trying to get his because he's frustrated with the offense? Uh, we got to be past that now if the Knicks want to make a transition to being one of the teams that make the playoffs or really are talked about. Um as not elite, but trending in the right direction. Um, you want to be in that conversation just like the Minnesota Timberwolves are, just like the Milwaukee Bucks are, um, even the retooled Chicago Bulls. You know, you want to be in that conversation as a team that's trying to head in the right direction. So where does this leave us now with the New York Knicks? Will this be a playoff team? I don't think so. I don't. I mean, last year it took 44 wins to get into the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. That eight seed was Detroit. Now, being that I think the, the the teams that didn't make the playoffs would be a little stronger, a little healthier, that total should come down some. So it's possibly you may be getting the playoffs with 41 wins, I believe, this year, something to that effect. But I think the Knicks are going to top out around 40, 41 wins. I could be mistaken, and I would love to be mistaken. I think it would be great to have the Knicks back in the playoffs again. But I just think there's a lot of teams that have more cohesion, more in tune with their system, a little more talent. And I just think it's going to be hard for the Knicks to crack the top eight this year. I think they'll be closer than they've ever been in the past few years. And I think next year with some additions and some tweaks that they'll make the playoffs next year. But, hey. Hopefully, I'm wrong. I could look back at this video and say I'm wrong, and the Knicks have somehow had a phenomenal year, and I could say, hey, I blew it, because that would be great for the NBA, and I'd love to see it. But that's how I feel. That's what I see. I'm the hoop guru, so I'm going with my vision. 
that's it, y'all. And please uh, subscribe, hit the like button. Give me your feedback and, and some com comments on the video. If you think I'm wrong, if you think I missed something, please let me know. I love banter. I love to respond. So thanks for listening. I'm going to keep talking. Keep supporting. Y'all have a good one. Peace.